This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. It's one of those inescapable truths a person has to face later on in life. Growing old means noticeable changes in the physical, emotional, and mental development of a person. This has led to a medical study that is entirely dedicated to the care of the elderly. Uh, it's a screening tool used by geriatrician to us. It's a uh, multidimensional, multidisciplinary approach in screening that will eventually will help the geriatrician arrive a comprehensive uh, assessment and recommendation and plan for our elderly patient. Geriatrics deals with possible treatments and prevention of various diseases that a person can experience later on in his or her life. These include high blood pressure, diabetes, osteoporosis, and even psychiatric and general problems such as depression, insomnia, fatigue, and diminished appetite. Usually, hindi, hindi natin napapansin na meron pala silang ganung problema. Uh, after the screening, that's the time that uh, we will discover that uh, this elderly patient has this depression pala, and then there's this mild dementia, and, uh, and we have to have an intervention for that. Those who are over the age of 65, whether healthy or frail old people, should see a geriatrician to monitor their health regularly and to ensure that they can maintain their independence for as long as possible. How can one cope with the gradual changes in one's body? What strategies can you employ to prevent the onset of certain diseases associated with growing old? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Lourdes Carolina Dumlao, a geriatrician from the Victor R. Potenciano Medical Center and a member of the College of Geriatric Medicine. Also joining us is Dr. Roy Cuisson, a geriatric medicine specialist from the University of Santo Tomas Hospital and a member of the Philippine College of Geriatric Medicine. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Good Welcome evening. to the show. Hi, good evening. Tonight, good we're evening. talking about uh, geriatric medicine. Getting to understand this branch of medicine, what exactly is uh, geriatric medicine? Ladies first. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Sandy. <laughs> okay, usually, geriatric medicine is a subspecialty of internal medicine or family medicine. And we deal with the unique needs of the older person. So older persons would usually have multiple chronic problems and a geriatrician would be able to address these problems. Dr. Wright? There, we have to add a little, a lot, a little something there. Uh, we should always not think about just the diseases for the elderly. So a geriatrician may also simply look after the continued health of a person over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. So when um, someone is over 65, is it automatic that they should um, seek or look for a geriatrician already? Dr. Sandy? Well, not really. Uh, as a general rule by law, the senior citizen is 60 and above. Okay. You know? So we follow the world health at mm -hmm. 60 and above. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're 60 and above, you automatically have to go to a geriatrician. Like we were talking off cam, yes. there's such a thing as biologic age versus physiologic age. So you can be 80, but you feel 60 or you feel 55. You're strong. You see former U.S. President Bush um, skydiving, even at, I think he was 90 when he skydived. And at the same time, you have patients who are like 55 and they feel 80. 
uh, because they have multiple comorbidities already. So just the age alone is not really the determining factor for seeing a geriatrician. Mm -hmm. So one can opt to see a geriatrician even if he's not he or she is not yet 60? Yeah. Is that possible? Most geriatricians are internists or family medicine specialists, so they would still know how to treat someone who is not necessarily a senior citizen. Mm -hmm. How about the importance, uh, Dr. Roy, the importance of... Uh, having a geriatrician or seeing a geriatrician? Well, seeing a geriatrician is starting to become more important because we're starting to realize that people, when they reach a certain age, also develop certain changes in their body. Mm -hmm. And these changes affect their behavior. They also affect their health. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is important to have somebody who understands these changes. Mm -hmm. And these changes will usually be understood by people by doctors who have specialized in the discipline. Because these are the doctors who have, who have taken the time to look at the different nuances of health changes that occur in individuals who are 60 or older. Mm -hmm. So it's always nice to have, uh, to have uh, the opportunity uh, that you will have to be able to go to a geriatrician in case that you feel that you would need somebody to, to, to talk to and somebody to take a look at your continued health, mm -hmm. even if you're still not feeling anything bad, but to look after your continued health after the age of 65. Somebody who has uh, an acumen, an awareness of danger signals mm -hmm. that are unique to that age group. Okay, what are the danger signals unique to that age group? Well, in that age group, as Doctora said, the, it's like, it's like we're, we have biological aging. So whether we like it or not, if our body simply ages mm -hmm. and like any other like any other uh, like any other object that ages then there is wear and tear and so this wear and tear will always give signals so the question there is whether these signals can be recognized mm -hmm. because many of the things that we we showed you earlier in the in the film that we showed you just earlier many of these diseases with the exception possibly of osteoporosis many of these diseases are also found in the younger population That's true. so we have to we have to be able to distinguish whether these are affect these are affectations of people who are in the elderly age group and distinguish them from the same affectation in terms of symptoms and signs that manifest in the younger population. Mm -hmm. So knowing that there are some signs and symptoms in the younger population yes. that are also evident. I think the geriatrician helps in differentiating whether it's a disease process okay. or whether it is actually a normal part of aging. Okay. But there are some misconceptions kasi, about what's normal part of aging. Some things that we assume are normal in older people are actually not. Like what, doctor? Like, for example, saying that um, your brain gets weaker or you become, you know, being forgetful is a normal part of aging. When actually, being forgetful per se shouldn't really be a part of aging. Um, maybe it takes slower to process, but forgetting things shouldn't really be uh, a, norm, a norm that is accepted as being part of growing old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's the geriatrician that is able to d distinguish that. Okay. And what goes on during the consults? We were talking off cam about that, the yeah. consultation that one has with uh, their geriatrician, assuming that they have chosen to, to see their geriatrician as their primary physician. I think generally, seeing a geriatrician takes longer than the average adult consult. And usually for us, we see patients and it takes us 30 minutes or maybe as long as an hour because as geriatricians we tend to not just dwell on the physical symptoms because actually sometimes the older persons they don't even have physical symptoms mm -hmm. relatives will bring them to you and they'll say you know doc just last week my mom was able to climb the stairs but this week it's like she can't even get out of bed so sometimes you have to also go deeper and find out if there are social issues um, psychological issues or we even look into nutrition, um, any signs of depression, functionality. So it's a very complete assessment for us to see a geriatric patient. So it takes much longer. Mm -hmm. And is uh, knowing that it takes much longer, it, does, it ha does it encompass all the other doctors that one uh, at that age would see? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Roy, I, I have to ask you what you mean. Does it encompass? Does it uh, when you see a geriatrician mm -hmm. and you know you have all these okay. concerns, all these physical concerns and emotional concerns? Yes. Do you have to see other doctors 
okay. in, at the same time aside from seeing your geriatrician. Okay. A geriatrician would normally be able to detect mm -hmm. changes that will require specialist care. So if the, in these particular situations, when a geriatrician is able to detect that a patient may need the additional attention from, let us say, a cardiologist or a specialist in pulmonary medicine, the geriatrician brings them in as part of the geriatric team mm -hmm. of care for this particular patient. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to also remember that geriatricians may also be cardiologists by mm, training. Okay. They may also be endocrinologists by training and so on and so forth. So in this particular situation, we still rely on the acumen of the geriatrician by, by virtue of his training to be able to recognize that there are problems that the elderly face. And these problems have to be have to be problems that will alert the geriatrician as to what type of care this individual will require. Mm -hmm. Is it common for family members or for the individual or the patient to uh, seek uh, medical attention from a geriatrician? Is it common here in the Philippines? Uh, for me personally, I see a lot of healthy people na they think, you know, family members would think, oh, mom, you're 70 and you've never really seen a doctor. So, yeah, I get them because they think by virtue of age alone, they should go see a geriatrician. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we also get referrals from the other subspecialties when they are able to identify that their patients, for example, a cardiologist can identify that his elderly patient has special problems that the geriatrician can assess. Okay. So, we get them you know, from both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Geriatrics is a pretty young specialty in mm -hmm. the Philippines. So in, in these particular situations, uh, we don't always find the, the, the elderly patient coming in with, with no complaints. Mm -hmm. So that means they don't routinely come to us and then say, well, I want you to take care of my health from now until, until, until whenever I am destined to leave the world. Mm -hmm. huh? So what happens is that they're usually brought in by relatives mm -hmm. because their relatives have observed that certain signs changing. and symptoms that the relatives consider to be disease states or mm -hmm. warnings of disease states. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we're the ones that have to distinguish whether these signs and symptoms alleged by the relatives really is part of, is part of aging or is really the manifestation of a specific disease process. Mm -hmm. Dr. Roy, Dr. Sandy, we have a question from Twitter. What can you suggest to my 67-year-old mother who suffers from insomnia? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we get that yes, a lot, Doc actually. Sandy. <laughs> that's, that's common. Yes. Uh, the answer would be sleep, what we call sleep hygiene. Usually, there are a lot of behaviors that elderly people do that actually affect their sleep at night. Like, for example, drinking coffee in the afternoon, uh, drinking soft drinks or taking long naps. Um, a lot of older people usually because they're retired or they just stay at home is they take two hour naps in the afternoon and then they, they watch TV and then they find themselves dozing off for 10, 15 minutes at a time so that when it comes to nighttime, they've basically used up the sleep, the circadian rhythm that they're supposed to have. So I don't normally give medications right away to help them sleep. I would advise them on changing their sleep, their behavior during the daytime so that the sleep at night becomes uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. What is uh, an ample or enough time for them to sleep in the afternoon, like a siesta or a nap? What's, what's, how <laughs> yes. is, is it an, uh, an hour, two hours, a couple that's, of minutes? That's, <laughs> that's pretty hard to answer <laughs> considering that the siesta is a practice that we inherited yes. from the Spanish mm -hmm. uh, purse people. No? Uh, as far as insomnia is concerned, I just want to point out that there are two things that I consider. The first is that there is really no insomnia. In other mm -hmm. words, these are elderly people who go to bed early and therefore they wake up, they wake up early. So they go to bed at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they wake up at 3, 3.30. That's six hours of sleep. And then they, 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 they wander around the house making noise. So the others who are trying to sleep because they went to sleep at 12, suddenly find this clanking and clanging uh, bothersome and then they say the elderly is insomniac, but actually the elderly is not. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one important thing. The other thing is that certain, certain elderly who, who say that they cannot sleep usually have underlying problems that they're thinking about. So they're thinking about, they might be thinking about finances, 
They might be thinking about illnesses in members of the family. They might be thinking about problems among their, their married daughters or their married sons. Okay. So these are the ones that can keep them awake. And so therefore, we have to bring in the family and find out. Mm -hmm. And that takes time. And that should be resolved for, yes. for all of well, the... Well, not necessarily resolved, but perhaps there can be a compromise mm -hmm. where one side accepts the situation. Okay. That, that's important, no? For one side to accept the situation. Yes. So there's peace and quiet at home. No more clanking in the middle <laughs> of the night. Dr. Sandy, Dr. Roy, we'll talk more about um, geriatrics and uh, the misconceptions of Filipinos when it comes to aging when Med Talk returns. Did you know, according to Euromonitor International, Italy, Monaco, Germany, and Japan have always topped the list of countries with the largest proportions of people who are over 65 years old globally. Improved living standards and better health care have allowed the world's population to live longer. Several developing countries have also joined the fray, with China and India showing similar demographic trends. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about geriatrics. So now we have a caller on the line. Hi, Bubbles. Hello, good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Your question, please, for uh, Dr. Roy and Dr. Sandy. Uh, my question is, is it possible to have dementia or Alzheimer's disease even at the age of 30? So the question was, is it possible to have Alzheimer's. dementia or Alzheimer's disease at the age of 30? Um, yes, although it's not that common. Usually dementia is really seen in the older age group. But remember that dementia is an umbrella term for us. So there are many kinds of dementia. There is dementia that is also because of Parkinson's. There's Lewy body dementia. There's Alzheimer's dementia. So maybe the dementia in a 30-year-old would not necessarily be an Alzheimer's type okay. of dementia. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can see it in the younger population. It's just not that common. Okay. All right, Bubbles, are you still on the line? Bubbles Diaz? Okay. Okay, she, she's not there anymore, she's but there. thank you, thank you, doctors. Now, before uh, we uh, cut to the break, we were talking about um, the misconceptions. We're going to talk about the misconceptions when it comes to uh, how the Filipinos think about aging. So, Dr. Roy, uh, what, what kind of um, concerns or questions have you encountered? Well, it's not a question, but what I encounter in terms of behavior in the family. So, in terms of behavior in the family, sometimes when you have an elderly person in the family, the family thinks that the elderly person is dependent on them. Mm -hmm. So that means they go out of their way and they take care of the elderly individual. And sometimes the elderly individual doesn't like the attention because they really are not completely dependent and they should not be completely dependent on the family with whom they live. So we have to understand the elderly individual also would like to think that they're still able to, let's say, earn a living. The elderly individual should also be able to take care of themselves. So getting, getting, for example, a caregiver for somebody, an elderly individual, who is still walking around the house and going shopping, uh, might be considered offensive to the elderly individual. And these elderly individuals also have to be given a chance to, to earn a living if they like. So there are situations where sometimes it's good to have the elderly individual engage in small, in small businesses. Uh, they can, they would, some of them would like to have their own little sari-sari store within the house. And, uh, and these are things that keep them occupied. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they don't want to always be thought of as dependent on the family. And this is a misconception that sometimes occurs in the provinces, where the elderly, because of our, of our very close family yes. relationship, uh, the, the elderly suddenly becomes cared for 
even to the point where they sometimes don't like it anymore. Because mm -hmm. we think as, uh, as you know, it's cultural. Eh? Yes. We yes. think that because they're already elderly, yes. they need special attention. And yes. we uh, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. I think one of the misconceptions is it's like we see old equals weak. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily follow that when you're old, you're also weak. And because as a culture, the Filipinos, we value our old people. Now, we're very grateful to them for everything that they have done for us, especially our parents and our grandparents. So our instinct is when they are older, we would like to also take care of them the way they took care of us. And sometimes it goes to the other extreme. You, ha you see older people who are very functional. They're strong, they're healthy, they're active, but their children reaches over and slices their food for them on their plate gets food for them or you know when they're walking somebody is assisting them when actually they don't really need it mm -hmm. and the end effect is they become very more dependent earlier than they really should be because we tend to baby them already because we think ah she's already old so i need to be the one to take care of her but the older person doesn't really need taking care of yet yet Mm -hmm. So should we wait for that older person to seek our help, to ask for help, and not voluntarily give it yet? In, in many cases, the elderly may not recognize that it's time for them to ask for help. Oh. So sometimes we have to be alert to certain, to certain manifestations of incapacity already. And this can sometimes be very simple when the elderly sometimes might say she's dizzy. Mm -hmm. Or there may be some, some incomplete falls. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, they become careless. So when they start manifesting this, even if they say that they can do it, but suddenly they're, they're not able to hold, let's say, a frying pan properly, then we have to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, then perhaps it's time to have them assessed. Okay. Doctors, uh, we have a caller on the line. Jaime Mangalian. Mga Lalian. I hope I said that right. Hi, hi, Mayor. Yes. Hi, good evening. Good evening, po. Mm -mm, good evening. Yung question mo para sa mga doctors natin. Opo, ang ganito po ang katanong ko, a person suffering from diabetes at an early age, uh, being treated by an endocrinologist, would the approach of medical profession be different when he reaches the geriatric age? Salamat, hi, Mayor. So this is, may I? <laughs> uh, the reason why I took an interest is because my practice is endocrinology. Oh, okay. Doctor. So part of my practice. So in this particular case, uh, it all depends. No? Generally, if, the pa if this patient is diabetic, then and he has or she has been diabetic for some time, since they were young, mm -hmm. we have to be watching out for deterioration of certain organ systems as a result of the diabetes. We have to find out whether the diabetes has been under good control or not. And we have to be alert on the danger signals that will indicate uh, already certain organ damage. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, it's not very different. Sometimes it may require that a geriatrician who is not also an endocrinologist may, may also refer the patient to an endocrinologist for co-management, mm -hmm. since an endocrinologist would still be the one that should be managing diabetes, even in the elderly. The standard of care and the type of care the diabetic receives doesn't change in terms of age. It, it changes in terms of involvement of organ systems. So if the organ system, let's say the kidney is already involved, then perhaps this patient has to be placed on insulin rather than on oral hypoglycemics. Mm -hmm. And we have to be alert as to certain propensity of elderly individuals to develop certain adverse effects from oral hypoglycemic drugs. Mm -hmm. So these are things that have to be considered. We also have to take a look at the lipid profile, the cholesterol, triglycerides, mm -hmm. that will alert us to impending coronary artery disease. Mm -hmm. And when that happens and we are not a cardiologist, then we usually call in a cardiologist for co-management. Mm -hmm. So co-management, so geriatricians work with other physicians. Yes, it's a multidisciplinary yes. field. So it's usually a team approach when there's a geriatrician on board. Okay, hi, Me. Oh, still, no, not on the line anymore, but thank you for calling. What are, Dr. Roy and Dr. Sandy, what are the most common geriatric problems that um, you've seen or that you know of? Okay. Well, there's such a thing 
called geriatric syndromes. Okay? And the geriatric syndromes are usually syndromes that are commonly seen in the older population. And this include dementia, um, delirium, falls, because usually it's the older population that suffer from a lot of falls. And what is unique about this is falls is like a snowball. It, it, it has a snowball effect because an older person who suffers a fall and has a fracture translates into loss of dependence and loss of functionality. Um, usually, nutritional status is also considered um, a geriatric syndrome. Frailty is a new concept in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. which has been also addressed under geriatric medicine. So there's actually a whole gamut of um, diseases that fall under geriatric medicine. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the more common ones yes. that you mentioned. How about the more severe geriatric concerns, Dr. Roy? Severe geriatric concerns would be already at severe dementia. Because in pa geriatric patients who have severe dementia, generally we have, we have problems. Individuals who have multi-system organ failure. So these are severe problems already. Mm -hmm. uh, patients who are, who are not mobile anymore, who are bedridden. We have to look for pneumonia. We have to look for secondary infections due to bed sores. Yes. So these are, these are the very severe problems in the elderly. As far as nutrition is concerned, sometimes it's not so much the the inability of the elderly to eat, but rather it's because there may be problems with, den with the dental equipment. Mm -hmm. Remember that they lose most of their teeth and they lose most of their taste buds. At the age of 60, you've already lost 60% of your taste buds. So these are individuals who may not have lost appetite, but actually they lose appetite because they can't taste it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why elderly individuals would love this very salty food like Tuyo, they like that. Mm -hmm. Because it's salty, they can taste it. So, but we have to be careful because once they eat too many salty foods, then they end up with hypertension. Yes, yeah, so and it's another problem again to address. They end up with edema and so on. Yes. So we have, to, we have to be sure that we, we are alerted to these problems. Okay. Dr. Roy, Dr. Santi, we have another, or another caller on the line, Teodoro de Castro. Hi, Teodoro. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Please Hi, Angel. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Teodoro de Castro. I'm 68 years old. And my problem is I always, I, om, I urinate almost every one to one and a half hours at night. So I get up uh, that, that often. Is it, is it some, there's something wrong with me? Thank you. Thank sure. you, sir, for your question. <laughs> Dr. Roy? Well, if you urinate more than twice a night, generally that is something to be concerned about. If you're 68 years old, the question I have is that, have you seen your family physician? Because remember that at 68 or even at the age of 60, uh, it's more frequent to take a look at certain organs that may be problems in the elderly. For example, the prostate. The patient is a male. So we have to take a look at the prostate. It's possible that he may be suffering from what we call an enlarged prostate gland, in which case that is the reason why he, has free, he, frequents, he frequents the toilet every hour. Mm -hmm. Also, it's also possible he might have a urinary tract infection. So these are things that can easily be diagnosed. They can, they can, give, they can ask for a urinalysis, and they can do uh, a simple digital rectal examination to determine whether there is prostatic enlargement or not. Mm -hmm. So these are the common things that to consider for, for somebody like our patient who goes to the bathroom every hour, mm -hmm. in which case he becomes insomniac. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so that's another, that's another reason for insomnia. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Teodoro? Hello, yes. Yes, hi. Uh, would you have another question for our doctors? Yeah, uh, does it matter? I drink. Yeah, actually, I, is, the reason probably is I, I drank almost between 12 to 16 glasses of water a day. Is that one of the causes? Uh, generally, no. If you drink the water during the day, Generally, the number of times you go to the bathroom at night is still the same. So if you're going there every hour, something, something might be wrong. So you may really need to see a doctor. Um, Mr. De Castro? Okay, thank you very okay. much. Thank you too for calling. All right, Dr. Roy, Dr. Sandy, we'll talk more about geriatrics when MedTalk returns.
If you want to beat father time and keep your brain in peak condition even in old age, you may want to stay healthy and boost your memory by using olive oil. Did you know that oleocanthal is a compound in olive oil and has been found to slow down changes in the brain that can lead to Alzheimer's? It is advised that you replace regular cooking oil with olive oil. According to the World Health Organization, there are currently 600 million people aged 60 and over worldwide. This number is expected to double by 2025 and is expected to reach 2 billion by 2050. The focus has specially shifted to senior citizens living in developing countries as they have been identified as the least prepared to handle various challenges associated with aging. For Concepcion Leonardo, living in her 70s has brought a myriad of health concerns, one of which includes high blood pressure. Dahil madalas ako na mamalingki, dahil may tindahan ako, tumaas yung dugo ko. Today, she is more conscious of her lifestyle and opts to walk every morning for 30 minutes and avoids unhealthy foods. Basta taon-taon, kapatingin talaga ako sa doktor. Natakot ako nga may maramdaman ako bukas. Pag masama ang pakiramdam ko, nagasabi ka agad ako sana. Since some illnesses are more prominent in elderly people, it is important that they get essential information advice and medical care to keep them healthier and for them to live longer. We're back here on MedTalk still talking about geriatrics. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. So Dr. Sandy, Dr. Roy, we saw at, uh, on the VTR that um, Concepcion Leonardo is um, conscious and aware of her health and, and what she's able to do and what she still wants to do in the future. Is that common for our uh, senior citizens? Mm. Yes, uh, I find that a lot of the senior citizens, they have an idea mm -hmm. of how, you know, how they want to grow old and what they need to do in order to stay healthy and, you know, like for example, eating healthy, regular exercise, so that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. And um, the role of the family members when uh, it comes to the thinking of our elderly, uh, it, it does play a big role, no? It does help when, when they encourage their, instead of babying their family members. Yes, the social support from the family members is very important because a lot of your older persons would already either um, have no children living at home or some half, maybe half of them would already have a spouse who is already diseased. So the social support from family members, regular visits, regular interaction with them also helps a lot because sometimes if you take this away from them, the social support, and they're not able to interact with other people, it may cause them to become isolated and depressed. Mm -hmm. And you have a whole new myriad of symptoms to deal with when an older person becomes depressed. So when an older person becomes depressed, is that a sign for the family members to bring him or her to the doctor right away? For an older person, depression usually manifests differently. No? The older person is unique in the sense that diseases manifest differently. They have atypical presentations. Like for adults, younger adults, if you have an infection, usually you would manifest with fever, cough. An older person with an infection, say a urinary tract infection, usually wouldn't manifest with fever. They would manifest with loss of appetite. They would um, present to you with increased sleeping time. And normally, you wouldn't think that this is being caused by an infection. So it's the same with depression. It's not as if they will come to you and say that, you know, I've been crying, I'm sad. Usually, it's the same. They manifest with loss of appetite, um, 
they have less self-care, so they're lazy to take a bath, they're lazy to get out of bed. Oh, that's a sign of depression for, for our elderly, no? Lazy to do um, basic hygiene. Basic hygiene yes. no? Okay. And, and because they're lazy to do basic hygiene, there comes the family members um, maybe prodding them or encouraging them to go see, see a doctor. But, but how does that go when they, they're encouraged to see a doctor but they themselves do not want that, uh, that care or that medical attention? It depends because we have to remember that sometimes depression's roots may be with the family members. Mm -hmm. So it may require a third party who is impartial to be able to identify the conflict. Mm -hmm. So that is the time that perhaps it's good to be taking a fam an elderly person in the family to a physician to try to thresh out what the underlying problem is. Mm -hmm. Now for those elderly who do not want to be brought to a physician, we have to distinguish whether their refusal is a refusal that is stemming out of stubbornness or a refusal stemming yeah. out of dementia. That means they might be refusing, but they don't know they're, defu they're refusing. And the others may just simply be stubborn because they really don't feel anything except that the family members feel that they need attention mm -hmm. and they, they don't want the, the unnecessary attention. Mm -hmm. So we have to bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. And speaking of family members, we have a Facebook question. My brothers and sisters and I disagree over how to care for my mother. How do we proceed? Yeah, we're talking about family members and how to care for okay. their elderly. Uh, Usually my question is, how would your mother want to be cared for? Sometimes they've reached a point where the older person is already demented, so they don't know. But I ask family members, from when your mother was younger and you would have conversations with her, what did she say she would want? Because ultimately, it's not about the children. It's about what the older person would want uh, and how the quality of life she wants when she gets older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much the... De but, all, you know, this is actually common when children disagree. Because some children want to be aggressive. Some children, they just want to make sure that their parent is not in pain. So it's ultimately a question of what did the patient want mm -hmm. when she, if she, if she ever verbalized um, plans for when she got older. Mm -hmm. And depends also on who, uh, which child she she expressed her plans too, no? I think for Filipinos, what happens is who's, whoever the... The elder one. The banker is. Okay. okay? So right. whoever has the financial power uh, ultimately gets to decide mm -hmm. what will happen to the parent. Okay. And the other siblings end up deferring to that person. That's the realistic situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. Dr. Roy, we have another caller on the line, Clarina Reyes. Good evening, Clarina. Hello, Dr. Dr. Roy, good, good evening po. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Hello, oh, oh, your question, please. Uh, my question is that diabetic po ako for eight years na. Then, at present, Last December, naumpisa na kong naging nagdra-dry yung aking skin. From hanggang sa palad ko, hanggang siko. And then, from my toes hanggang tuhod ko. Is this a cause din ng diabetic ko? From tuhod to... I did not get palad. the last one. To, from from tuhod to... So, ma'am, nagdry po yung skin ninyo. Pero Ay, hindi... Certain areas only. At makati. Ah, it's a diabetes. Okay. Yeah. So, for this patient, uh, how old are you, please? I'm already 68 years old, doctor. So, the important thing is, when was the last time you had your blood sugar taken? Because generally, itchiness is a symptom of elevated blood sugar levels. So, you have to probably see your doctor, your, the one who is handling your diabetes, and probably monitor your fasting blood sugar. It might be a little high, especially now it's after Christmas season. Mm -hmm. uh, Clarina? Yes, ma'am, doctora. Uh, may question pa po kayo sa ating mga doktor? Uh, wala na po. Okay, maraming salamat. Salamat po. Okay, so she has to monitor her yes, blood, blood sugar, sugar. No? because I, uh, from the, the knee, tuhod ba? No, but and she also palad, has on the yeah. arm. 
and it's but also But usually derived. itchiness is itchiness a symptom is also a symptom of hyperglycemia. Mm -hmm. Of hyperglycemia. Okay. okay, so these are like as mentioned earlier, yeah. this is one of the concern that our elderly face um, yes. mm -hmm. when when it comes to aging. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes like I said, they have a typical symptom. So normally they would exhibit signs or they would complain of something that is not normally uh, related to that disease entity. So not like itchiness. Itchiness is not a common complaint of diabetics. Most diabetics would complain of frequent urination, always being hungry, um, yeah, unintentional weight loss. But then you get patients that present to you with different uh, complaints. Mm -hmm. And then as a geriatrician, you kind of, you know uh, what to look for with that a typical complaint. Mm -hmm. These are physical manifestations. How about the social issues that our elderly uh, face? Uh, well, one of the social issues that the elderly usually face is isolation. When you have your elderly, usually if they're married and they have children, most of their children have already moved out and have their own families. And like mentioned earlier, you have spouses who have passed away. A lot of elderly also have their own peers who have already passed away. And so they lose the social interaction that they would normally have. And what tends to happen is they just stay home because they think there's nowhere to go. There's no one to go out with. So we try to tell them and encourage them that they should still continue uh, being socially active. And like we said, we encourage the family members to continue uh, visiting their parents, to have regular family days out together. Mm -hmm. Is it common for, for the Filipinos to um, hire a nurse or a ger geriatric care at home? If you can afford it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Like the What's more common is you have um, relatives mm. that would come in and then they help, you know, because the Filipino has the extended, extended, and extended family. Yes. So sometimes you'll see patients that this is the niece of the wife of the brother of my cousin, mm -hmm. like that. So that's, that's pretty common where you have family members, even those that are not directly related to them, come and take care of them. Mm -hmm. Is it important that those who are who take care of uh, our elderly, see a geriatrician first so that they know how to care for the patient properly so that they're, you know, it's a common goal, it's a common um, thinking that goes into the proper care of the elderly. That's the ideal. The ideal is um, as a doctor, as a geriatrician, we see not only the patient, but the social support system that the patient has, and that includes family and caregivers. And usually when you sit down to discuss, you have a common goal. This is what we are all working on, and this is your role so that we can work on this, because the doctor can only do so much, because you only see the patient like once a month, but the family and the caregivers with them 24 hours, seven days a week. So usually for us, it's early intervention. We try to identify possible problems the older person has, and we make a plan how to do the intervention so that it doesn't be actually become a problem. And you instruct the caregiver and the families on what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. Dr. Roy, we have another caller on the line, Alma Rion. Hi, Alma. Good evening. Good evening po. Oo, hi, Alma. Yung question mo para sa mga doktor natin. Uh, good evening po, Doc. Uh, my question is, will ISPA help me lose weight since I cannot exercise due to my mobility problem? Dahil po, yung tuhod ko masakit lagi dahil mayroon akong osteoporosis. Uh, ilang taon na po kayo? Diabetes. May diabetes din po ako. 71 na po ako. 71. Okay, thank you very much, Alma. Spa. Uh, spa, meaning massages. Massages. Because if she's, uh, hello, Alma. Yes. Oh, um, you mean massages? You sa spa? Ay spa means uh, yung pung magpapawis ako sa loob ng ano? Ah, sauna. Ah, ah yung sauna. sauna po. Okay. okay. Ah, okay. Because she can't exercise, so an alternative to, to, to sweating weight. it to out. Yes, weight. to losing weight. We have to be careful. Uh, when you have, when you're talking about sauna or, or spa, as you call it, uh, at your age, there are, there are dangers. And the dangers could be dehydration. The danger could also be imbalances in certain of your electrolytes. 
and this can be this can be very serious problems if you do not detect it on time it can lead to fainting spells it can lead to falls so you have to be careful when you say that you want to to uh, engage in spa besides spa will make you lose weight only because you lose the water yeah. mm -hmm. but once you once you have lost the water you can easily regain it the moment you start drinking again mm -hmm. so it's not a permanent way to lose weight there are exercises that can be designed for somebody who is who is not as mobile as other people these exercises can be taught to you by your geriatrician mm -hmm. so okay. which means you have to go to a geriatric specialist they can teach you how to do that mm -hmm. uh, and as far as walking is concerned it depends on how extensive your your disability is and how extensive the osteoporosis is mm -hmm. okay alma my question ka pa um wala na po marami sana pero wag na lang po tama na po yun next time ah, na naman po next time na ulit oh, uh, sige marami thank salamat you, for thank calling you, thank you salamat. welcome she has more concerns, like was, uh, as we've been saying, that our elderly has a lot of concerns and they should really see their geriatrician to voice out how they feel and, mm -hmm. and how they want to proceed with proper health care. <laughs> we'll talk more about geriatrics when MedTalk returns. Welcome back to Med Talk. We're still talking about geriatrics. Now we have a question um, from Twitter. How do you know if an elderly person is still fit to drive? My Lolo still drives and he's 74. Well, that depends. How many accidents has your Lolo been in in Oops. the past Month. two or three months? Um, also, how's his vision? Is he still able to see clearly? Um, usually, driving is an issue that is not commonly talked about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but here we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually, that's what we ask. How many accidents have they been in? Um, do you notice any visual problems? Because if you do, then maybe it's time to have a sit down and talk honestly with your Lolo. Na maybe it's time to give up driving. But you know, driving can be an issue because it also signifies the loss of independence. It means that they're not going to be able to go someplace without somebody taking them there. So we don't we, we tread on this lightly. We really talk about it as a family and the family is able to voice out their concern because we just don't want to take away that ability of the older person to be able to get around and do things on his own. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ai? Yes. As far as driving is concerned, the fact that this question was asked by our viewer means that there is a reason why they are thinking about asking him not to drive. Mm -hmm. So what would be the reason why they're asking him not to drive? And as Doctora said, perhaps there has been increased number of accidents per year or per month. So this has to be checked also. Besides, it's always good to have the person checked as far as uh, visual problems is concerned mm -hmm. because sometimes we cannot detect that the visual problems are so bad that the pay that the person cannot see b clearly anymore the second consideration is the person has to be checked because of reflex time uh, elderly people generally may not sure. always all but they may have a decrease uh, reflex they might have an, uh, yeah decrease in reflex time that means it takes them longer mm -hmm. to react to certain situations and this can be important in the traffic situation we have here in Manila mm -hmm. <laughs> so the family members should sit down and talk to their yes. lolo and and yes. try to assess the situation again see their geriatrician as the primary physician for their grandfather <laughs> now let's talk about geriatric care management so uh, we were talking to Alma earlier on the phone and she would like to lose weight and um, she would like to um, do that by going into the sauna you know, sweating it out. What lifestyle changes would be most appropriate for our elderly um, so they maintain their, you know, their health uh, and they don't um, overdo it? Physical activity is actually, um, studies have shown that physical activity is actually 
the most important aspect in order to remain healthy and have an independent lifestyle for the older persons. So as long as they maintain their physical activity and have mental stimulation, you know, me, I encourage my patients to play mahjong, mm. um, to play sudoku, because it, they continue to stimulate your mind. So it, it helps them, it helps also prevent the onset of dementia when you are physically and mentally stimulated. Mm -hmm. Crossword puzzle, I crossword, see a lot of yeah. uh, the elderly doing crossword puzzle. <laughs> yeah, not so much TV because you, you mm -hmm. have a lot also that says, oh, but I watch the news, I watch current events, but the TV is a one-way street. There's no interaction with the television. So it's much better if you just uh, encourage your dad or your mom to go out with friends and have long conversations over coffee and there's an exchange of ideas because it stimulates them more. Mm -hmm. Plus, it gives them the opportunity to still socialize even if they are already retired and staying at home. Mm -hmm. And speaking of TV, they can call MedTalk. Yeah. They can call us and you know interact with our doctors. <laughs> and ask more questions. Exactly. Five four eight four six seven eight. <laughs> Dr. Roy, you'd like to add to that. Yeah, just a little thing about our the the patient you, you brought out earlier. Yeah. Uh, this patient said she wanted to lose weight. Uh, the question there is how ma how much overweight is she? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's been shown that you just really need to lose about ten to fifteen percent of your weight if you're really very overweight in order to improve your, your outlook as far as cardiovascular disease is concerned. Mm -hmm. So she might not really need to lose weight if she's not very, if she's not very much overweight. Mm -hmm. She might be imagining that she's overweight. And sometimes we have to find out by, by going into the, the history of I why she I wants to lose weight. And particularly, why does she want to go with a spa? Yes. Uh, who gave her the advice? Maybe family so members, this is important. Or friends. No. So perhaps we can do we can do certain things for her, assess her osteoporosis, find out whether she can still walk, because a five minute walk is generally encouraged for people who are above sixty five, mm -hmm. and this five minute walk can be can be increased in terms of several minutes a day until after about five or six weeks the patient is able to walk about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. So. Things like that, mm -hmm. they, these, they have to be considered. These are physical activities. Yes. How about food that they should take more of or food that they should avoid? I think it depends on what comorbidities they have. So of course, if you're diabetic, you want to avoid foods that are high in sugar or high in carbohydrates. At the same time, if you're hypertensive, you want to avoid foods that are too salty or fatty. But generally, I think that as long as they eat everything in moderation, they should still be fine. Mm -hmm. Because as you get older, like I said, your taste buds atrophy. So you lose your sense of taste also. So it, telling an older person that you should avoid this and avoid that and avoid this might be more harmful than helpful. Mm -hmm. So like we all say, everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sandy, you mentioned helpful. So uh, as a final word, how, how can you... Um advice all our viewers and me uh, on how to care for our elderly not to baby them as you mentioned earlier and just to respect them and, and give them that space that they need as they grow old yeah i think um what i just always tell everybody is you let the older person be basic personality doesn't change so as they get older that doesn't really change so let them continue doing what they enjoy doing as long as it's not harming them or harming other people let them do it allow them to be independent continue to let them make their own decisions because that's important for them and it gives them a sense of self-importance that even if they're already older persons and they are retired and maybe financially dependent on you their child that they still retain a certain level of independence over their lives. And that's very important for them. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. Dr. Roy? Uh, in my case, very simple. I, do, I only want to tell everyone that growing old is not a disease. And one of the best ways to stay healthy is to go to a geriatrician. Not because you're sick, but because you want to remain healthy. Thank you very much, Dr. Roy. Yes, Dr. Sandy, you wanted oh, to... Oh, I just wanted to... I'm sorry, I will plug. I want to invite everybody to the launch of the geriatric care at the Victor R. Potenciano Medical Center. Um, we have what a daycare service. So a lot of people usually come in and they say that they have older persons and they just stay home. They have 
nowhere to go, so they watch TV the whole day or they sleep the whole day. Um, we're going to begin to offer a daycare service starting February. It's a once a week event and we have activities for older persons, arts and crafts, socialization, um, cultural events, ballroom dancing, yoga. So it gives your um, older loved one a place to go and something to look forward to during the week. Thank you very much, Dr. Lourdes Carolina Dumlao and Dr. Roy Coison for enlightening us about geriatri geriatrics, geriatricians, and, and how to care for our elderly. Thank you once Thank again. You. Welcome. See you again next Tuesday, 7 p.m. here on MedTalk on your scheduled on-air consultation on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Jacob. Good night.